This is KMRS Community Connection, and we're going to be talking about the county's response to the COVID-19 pandemic that's uh, spiking here in our region of late. And our guests today will include Bob Kapitsky, who's the uh, chair of the Stevens County Board of Commissioners, and he's also a member of the uh, uh, board of the Horizon Public Health. And also uh, Marsha Schroeder is with the uh, Horizon Public Health, and she is the Disease Control and Preparedness Coordinator. And Donna Greiner joins us as the Stevens County Emergency Management Director. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Well, uh, let's start off with Marsha. And uh, since you're probably right on the front lines of what's going on with things here, um, uh, tell me where we stand in Stevens County here as we get into the Thanksgiving holiday. Okay, thanks, Bill. And thanks for having us because we, we just think it's really important for our community to have a continuing um, messaging and information about what's happening with the COVID pandemic here locally. So what's going on right now is we have the National Guard set up to do testing. Um, and Donna's gonna talk a little bit more about that and some of the numbers that have come out of that and when people can go in and get tested. Um, but I just wanna talk about the importance of testing a little bit. You know, people say, well, um, why should I go get tested? Well, we're finding that through, that, through the testing, we are finding people that are asymptomatic who are spreading the virus and don't even know that they're spreading the virus. I believe that um, just this last week, we found 58 people who were tested um, at, the Gar at the National Guard Armory that didn't know they had COVID. And so they were spreading it um, wherever they went. And this, this is the opportunity for those people to put themselves in quarantine and um, stop that spread at that point. So um, that's a really important aspect of, of what we want to get across today for our messaging, that testing is important. The other important thing um, that we want to talk about is um, being responsible in our community and masking, social distancing, um, staying home when you can, um, except for essential services, that type of thing, that, and just following the governor's latest orders on what we should be doing to slow the spread and being responsible about that. So I think that's why we're here today. And then Bob and Donna are going to fill you in on some background and some other things that are happening as well. How many active cases do we have for right now? And uh, um, are, are all these people, are they being good about isolating? Um, right now, well, as of yesterday, um, we don't have the numbers yet for today, um, but as of yesterday in Stevens County, we had 89 active cases, um, and that varies from day to day because if we, people that are in isolation, and, and I, I do believe that people that are diagnosed and told to be in isolation for 10 days or until they're fever-free for 24 hours and feeling better, um, that they are observing that isolation period. So that is really good. And a lot of them don't feel well enough to be out and about. So um, they're doing that, um, the, like 89. And a couple of days ago, it was 121. So depending on how many people test positive on a certain day, 10 days later or so, they're, those same people, that same number is going to fall off. So that's why it varies so much. Do you do a contact tracing then after that? We do. Um, Horizon Public Health is part of a, the regional and state um, contact and, or case investigation and contact tracing team. So we have designated nurses that spend time on that every week. Um, contact tracing is behind in the state of Minnesota. So it's really important for people to, when they test positive to get the information from their healthcare provider or call me here at public health or our horizon public health number, general number to um, get information about what they should be doing and what they shouldn't be doing um, in during their isolation and who around them should be quarantining. If we could uh, bring Donna into the uh, conversation here and talk a little bit about uh, the testing that's going on right now. And uh, I know the first uh, day that they had, I think it was almost 500 people, wasn't it? The first week, they had 831 individuals tested. Um, the second or last week, there were 691 or 694 individuals tested. And now um, what we've heard so far this week, as of last evening, there were 521 tested. 
um, but that was at 5.30 and they had a half an hour to go. Um, the first week we did hear that there was a 10% positivity rate um, and Marcia could probably talk a little bit more on that, but um, we haven't heard the results from last week yet. The testing is free. It's simple. I've been there twice to be tested. Um, the results are confidential and they come back quickly within three or four days of the testing. Um, I received a text message and an email both times. And if you don't have a text or email, you can receive a phone call. And it's um, the next testing will be December 1st. So that will be next week through the 5th. So Tuesday through Saturday. Um, if you don't have time or cannot make an appointment, you can walk in. And the times are from noon until 6 p.m. each day. Um, I think the first day that I walked through and it was our first day, Bob and Marsha were both there. I think it took probably seven minutes to get through just because it was the first day. And then the last time when I went last week, I think it was three or four minutes I made it through. You walk in the front door, you put on a clean mask and you walk through the line. Um, you are separated so it's safe. And you walk up, you pull your mask just below your nose and they swab your nostrils and you walk back out and it's that quick and easy. Um, they're, they're planning on to continue the, with this testing through January, which is a benefit for our, our West Central region or health area. Um, like Marsha shared, it's, um, it's important for people to be tested, especially if they do um, have symptoms and there are so many allergies and so much going on now, we, we're just not sure if it's COVID or if it's allergies or what it is. So I, we encourage the testing to be done. And I've gone twice. You can go as many times as you feel you need to. Um, and it's just now with our families all getting together, hopefully not, but if they do, this is the opportunity for them to be tested. And above all, it's free. It's free, that's right. <laughs> Bill, the, the know, importance of that is um, they, if they think they've been exposed to someone, they should wait th um, five to seven days to get uh, tested so that they don't get a false negative um, because it takes about that long for, uh, for the body to build up the viral load of the COVID um, virus. So um, that's important. And Donna mentioned the 10% positivity rate on the first um, uh, the first uh, set of testing days that we had in early November. And that actually was a little bit alarming because um, when Alexandria had their National Guard testing event um, a couple weeks before that, they had a 4% positivity rate. And so that's a big difference. And we know that there is just enormous amounts of community spread going around and we have to, we have to slow it down somehow. And if I could add, if, if, if you're leaving Stevens County to go someplace for Thanksgiving, when you get back, it'd be a great idea to go to the armory and get tested to make sure you haven't picked this up on your travels. I think that'd be a great time for people to use this testing. Well, this isn't what? just, this isn't only for Stevens County. This is for anyone in Minnesota. So anyone can come from any location to be tested. It's not only for Stevens County residents. Why was Stevens, uh, Stevens County chosen? To throughout the state, they look throughout the state to identify um, locations that would be um, more central. And they did find that this facility, the National Guard Armory in Morris did work well for testing. And that was one reason why they had a, a good ingress and egress or entrance and exit location um, that was quick and easy and the parking was good. That's, that's what we've heard. We'd like to remind people that they're listening to uh, the Community Connection Program on KMRS, and we're talking with Donna Greiner, who's Stevens County Emergency Management Director, Marsha Schroeder, who's with uh, Horizon Public Health, the Disease Control and Preparedness Coordinator, and Bob Kapitsky, the Chair of the Stevens County Board of Commissioners and also a member of the Board of the Horizon Public Health. And Bob, the county has been doing a lot of work with uh, helping out businesses, in particular businesses and nonprofits, and uh, uh, Stevens County was given... Uh, what's called CARES Act money of $1.3 million. And, and uh, even with that much money, it's uh, businesses are hurting out there. Uh, that's for sure, Bill. Um, 
I'm on the committee for the nonprofits and small business, and, and we had a grant application, so we, we got to see some records that show the losses in Stevens County, and, and um, we were all shocked at the amount of money that was lost by our businesses and, and nonprofits. Uh, we're just about done with uh, handing the money out, and, and we did receive some extra money from the city of Morris and some townships. So I think we're probably going to be giving away about $1.4 million. Um, and even with all that money, um, we really, we know we came up short as far as, I mean, we could, it could be a lot more help. So I would just like to stress that now is the time with this new shutdown to support your local businesses. Um, do this curbside for restaurants. They're the ones that are in the biggest trouble. Um, maybe take three days a week and say you're going to alternate the, the sites, you know, to go to help them. And, and all your other local uh, stores and shops um, through the holidays, shop local. Don't go to the big box stores and rub elbows with people because you could get sick. So, so we really encourage you to stay home. It's easier to distance in the smaller businesses too. Absolutely right. And if we can get uh, people wearing masks, get a 95 to 100% people wearing masks, we can slow this down. You find people are uh, using masks more. They're getting used to the idea of having masks. I would say it's up. I think there's some certain spots that um, within the community and within the county that uh, um, don't feel the need to do it. Um, I read an article the other day about a nurse, that, a male nurse who just got off a shift, a terrible shift. And uh, he said he's tired of the fact that this is uh, interfering with your freedoms because he said freedom with freedom comes responsibility and that's that's really stuck with me i like my freedoms too but we have to be responsible and i think this is a case we have to be responsible for maybe four more months the vaccine will work we get through the holidays get warmer weather i think it's a real time to step up to the plate and uh do your part wear your mask social distance check on your neighbors um we want to get our schools back open to normal and our businesses back open to normal. And that's the only way we're going to do it. You mentioned vaccines, uh, Marsha, you were saying that, uh, uh, how is that going to work uh, in Western Minnesota? Well, um, it's, it's a bit complicated, but I'll, I'll give you a, the big picture. Um, we are planning regionally, um, with, our, with nine counties in our region um, to uh, tackle the vaccine problem when we, when we hear it's coming. Um, so healthcare workers, our, um, our hospital, our clinic, and our uh, long-term care staff, and even an assisted living and staff and so forth, um, will be the, the, the frontline workers, or will be the first people to have that vaccine available to them. Um, and, and after that, we will be um, putting that vaccine out for our uh, long-term care residents. So those people that are higher risk in, in nursing homes and assisted living areas. And so that's what we're working on getting organized right now. Um, we don't know how many doses will be coming to our region. Um, we know, we do know to begin with, that won't be many. We hope that people will um, take, take the shot and um, protect themselves so that they can in turn protect the people that they're caring for. Um, there's a lot of information about the vaccine and a lot of people have questions about it. Like, was it pushed through too fast? I mean, it's too fast. Well, I learned yesterday um, from Lynn Bata at uh, MDH, I was on a, one of her calls. And one of the reasons she explained the vaccine um, protocol for uh, getting it approved, any vaccine. And, you know, there's a stage where it's developed and then it has to go through safety, um, uh, safety measures and so forth. She said a lot of times all of that is delayed because a, a company is looking for funding to go through each of those steps. Well, this time the funding is there. They don't have to wait for that process to happen. And there is so much disease out there that they're able to find people that are willing to um, get the vaccine or get a placebo. So they've been able to speed up that process. It's not like waiting for a new pertussis vaccine where you, can, you, have, to, you have to have people that um, need to be vaccinated against that to try your new product. This is 
very available for companies to do their testing. And then it will go through the process of being approved by the FDA um, after they apply for emergency use authorization. And it has to also go through the ACIP, um, which is our CDC vaccine approval committee. So um, the, the vaccine is gonna be safe. Um, granted, there are certain people, you know, that always would have a problem with a vaccine or a reaction. Um, you may have, um, you know, a little discomfort, your arm might be sore, you might have a fever for a short amount of time, it's going to be a little different for every person, but it is going to be so important for us to um, have enough people to get the vaccine to start having that herd immunity. How will, you, how will they be distributed to the public after the high risk people? Um... Um, we are working on that. We hope to, and then, and that will also be determined um, which people are then next in line. Um, essential worker is a very broad um, category of people. And so um, we, will, we will be working with that. Um, it might come through uh, healthcare providers. It might be that public health would um, do our, cl our closed points of dispensing where we would have um, uh, groups, certain groups of people that would come through, like say maybe law enforcement and um, EMS, uh, public employees, that type of thing. Um, that is something that we will have to work on and that will be basically dictated by what MDH tells us that next population is that needs to get the vaccine or have that vaccine offered to them. You know, radio announcers are pretty high on the list too. <laughs> yes, you are, because you need to get this messaging out there. <laughs> no, I'll be the. I'll get in line as soon as I get notified. So no, you I can be I, in I, line I, right behind me. <laughs> we will. We will do a live remote from it. Okay. <laughs> okay. I. Anybody else want to add anything else that we haven't touched on here? Yes, I would. Um, I. I really want to thank. Horizon Public Health and Emergency, emergency Management for, for being upfront and, and, and fighting this pandemic. They're the leaders to, uh, to uh, everything the county does. They've had a great partnership. We do have a um, Stevens County Leadership call every Wednesday and, and Marsha and Donna lead this discussion. And uh, we have every, we have long-term care, we have the hospital, we have the superintendents, we have the university, we have daycare, and it goes on and on. We've had as many as 40 people and everybody gets a chance to discuss their needs, their wants, their problems. And uh, it's been a, just a great group of people. For, for a commissioner, I learned more in that hour about what's going on in the county than I could ever learn any place else. So it's uh, like, we're gonna have one today at, at noon. We'll find out more about how the schools are gonna, what they're gonna do at, during the holidays and after the holidays. The university has shared with us when they've had cases and what they've done. They, they uh, isolate them on campus so they don't, they're not in the community. It's been a great working uh, meeting. And um, I'd just like to thank public health, emergency management, and also um, thank our county staff. Becky and her staff have done wonders with, with the CARES Act and, and uh, all the uh, mandates that come down from the governor and, and uh, so we can keep our courthouse running smoothly. It uh, makes my job as commissioner much, much easier. So I just wanna pass on my thanks to all those people. Oh, yeah. one other thing, we wanna long-term care, they're, they're having trouble staffing. They've had people get sick. They've had people decide they can't do it because they're afraid of getting sick and maybe uh, infecting a loved one. Um, we are really in trouble with long-term care as far as staffing. We want to be able to take care of the regular people that aren't sick and we're getting to the point where even that's a problem. So please wear your mask. Please help us get out of this. Uh, it's, it's, it's not that big a sacrifice. So um, keep your distance, wear your mask and uh, have a happy Thanksgiving. Well, thanks for being with us. Donna Greiner again with the Stevens County Emergency Management Director, Marsha Schroeder with the Horizon Public Health. She is the Disease Control and Preparedness Coordinator, Bob Kapitsky, Chair of the Stevens County Board of Commissioner, and also a member of the Board for Horizon Public Health. Thank you. Thank you, Bill. Thanks, Bill. Thank you.